This is number five. In the XY plane, a line crosses through the Y axis at the point zero comma three and passes through the point four comma five. Which of the following is an equation of the line? And then it gives you a list of these four different equations. So I've made this graph here and let's take this apart. So this is an X and a Y plane. So let's start off with, let's put an X and a Y in there. Now, the way I remember this is X is on the ground. So your X's run across the bottom here and then your Y points up to the sky. So X on the ground, Y to the sky. So that's how I remembered. Y is up and down, X is left and right. So we have two points here. We have point zero comma three, and we have a second point four comma five. Now I'm gonna put little notes here because we're gonna need this later. So this is your X, this is your Y. And since we have two points here, I'm gonna call this X1. So here's your X, and this will be your Y. So this is Y1, X1, Y1. Since this is the second point, we're gonna call this one X2, and we'll call this one here Y2. Now, let's find out where those two points live. So. If each one of these across the bottom are numbers, this would be one. This one here in the center is called the origin is zero. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not gonna put the negatives, but this would be negative one, negative two, negative three. Now going up and down, we have one, two, three, four, Five, and that would just go up to infinity. This would go down to negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity. So let's find out where these two points live. The first one has the X at zero, so it's right in the middle, and then the Y goes up three spaces. One, two, three. So here is your first point. And to make the line that they're talking about, you just need two points. Because once you have two points, you can get a ruler and you can connect them. So this one goes through point four comma five. So four is your X. So I count over four. One, two, three, four. So it lives here. And then we have to figure out how much up or down it goes. Since five is a positive number, we know that we're going to go up. So I go up to four and then it's parallel over here to five. So here is our second point. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll take out a ruler. I put the ruler on the two points and I connect the two points. And there's our line. And again, I want to put arrows in there to show that these go on all the way to infinity and it goes in this way to infinity and beyond, which is no such thing, isn't it? Anyway, so this is the graph that's described in this problem. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out which of these equations would generate this line. So this is what we have. We have this graph. We're gonna put this off to the side here. We'll come back and look at that later if we need to. So when you have two points, we need to find something called the slope. Because right now, each one of these equations, they have y on the side, and then they have the x over on the other side. This is in the form which you'll hear in some of your algebra class where it's y equals mx plus b. Okay, y is the second value in these points. x is here. And then this is, m stands for slope. And b is your y-intercept. So this is your y-axis, your 
y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So here it crosses at 3, 0, 3, 0, 3. So we know what the y-intercept is. So we'll come back to that later. So the next thing that we're going to focus is on how to find the slope. To find your slope, you need to know the slope formula. And the way we do that is m equals y two minus y one over x two minus x one. You probably saw this in high school. If you didn't, then this is something that you're going to have to learn in order to answer these types of equations. So again, we have our two points, 0, 3, 4, 5. 0 is x1, x2 is 4. So th these two go on the bottom, these two go on the top. Now the tricky thing is, is you have to remember to be consistent. If this is your y2, you have to keep y2 and x2 on the left hand side. You have, don't flip, don't crisscross them. That's where a lot of students make mistakes. So you do y2 on the left, x2 on the left, y1 on the right, x1 on the right. Be consistent. So let's plug in these values. So y2, here, let's write it out again. y2 is 5. y1 is 3. OK? Now, the next thing is we look at the x's. x2 is 4. x1 is 0. So x2 minus x1, I'm sorry, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. 5 minus 3 is 2. 4 minus 0 is 4. Now, the thing is, is that right now we have a fraction that can be simplified because 2 goes evenly into both the numerator and the denominator. So you probably saw it right away that if I divide 2 by 2, that gives us 1. If I divide 4 by 2, that gives us 2. So m equals 1 over 2. So right away we can see that it could be this one or this one. M is not equal to 2, so these two are out. So we can just ignore this one and this one. So now that leaves us with this two, these two uh, possibilities. So let's go back to here now. So now we have y equals 1 half, because m equals 1 half, x plus b. Now we have to find out what b equals. Now, if you remember from these, we have two values that we could plug in there to see if they work. We have an x equals 0, we have a y equals 3, x equals 4, y equals 5. Let's stick on the second one here. So what I want to do is I want to take 5, since that's y, I'm going to plug it in there. 5 equals 1 over 2 multiply the x, in this case, is 4. And then we're going to add b. b is the unknown. We don't know what the b is. OK, so let's figure out what that is. So so here, let's write it again, just so we're clear. So 5 equals 1 half times 4. So half of a 4, 4 over 1, is the same thing as 4 times 1 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2, right, plus b. This simplifies into 2. 4 over 2 is the same thing as 2. Now, to get rid of this 2 so the b is by itself, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 2 minus 2 is 0, so I don't even have to worry about that anymore. And that's all that's left here is a b. So 
3 equals b. Now, for y equals mx plus b, we know that b now equals 3. We know m is 1 half, so y equals 1 over 2x, b is 3, plus 3. And then we look over here, right there, it's number 1.